Kia Sportage was the car that really capitalised on Kia's upward surge in recent years. Why did it do that? Well, as Kia was bringing out the Sportage, their quality was getting better and better and better, and people were in the market for a good SUV and crossover. That's just the way everything has been going recently. And Kia were there at the right time with the right product. So, it has become their best-selling model in the UK. Before I go any further, make sure you subscribe because, you know, every sub counts. And make sure you like it as well. And make sure you comment. And make sure you visit newmotory.com because, well, you just should. Now, I've never really thought about the Sportage that much, if I'm honest. But now, having driven one for the last week and a half or so, I've started to notice just how many there are on the road. And I kid you not, within five or ten minutes of every single journey I've had in this car, every single journey, I have seen another brand new Kia Sportage. I don't know whether I just didn't notice them before, but now I've been driving one and I've been going, oh snap, they are everywhere, absolutely everywhere. Now what's the best way to get to grips with a car that everyone seems to be buying? Well I thought, why don't I do a really long journey? So once again, I set off to Scotland. So, in the last week and a half or so, I have done 1,200 miles in this car. 1,200 miles. How have I done that many miles? Well, 400 or so was from where I live up to Scotland and then another 400 back. And then the other 400 has kind of been milling around in Scotland and doing the day-to-day -day things that I need to do just to get on in life. So, 1,200 miles in about a week and a half. And what's it been like? This particular car is the car that Kia predicts to be the best-selling model. It's a 1.7-litre turbo diesel four-cylinder with 114 brake horsepower and 280 foot-pounds of torque. Speed isn't its strong point, if I'm honest. 0 to 60 takes 11.1 seconds and the top speed is 109 miles an hour. And to give that some context, last week I was driving the new Kia Picanto and that did 0 to 60 in 11.6 seconds and the top speed was 107 miles an hour from a 1.25 litre naturally aspirated force in the petrol engine. Now I don't know about you but if you put the Picanto and the Sportage side by side I would just expect the Sportage to be quicker than it is. It seems like a bigger car, like it's going to have a bigger engine and it does but it just doesn't have the performance that stretches it beyond the Picanto. It just, it just doesn't perform in quite the way I would have liked. A bit more speed and a bit more performance would be nice. That said, it's not a bad engine. Some people have complained that it's a little bit too noisy and I don't really agree. Perhaps it's a little bit noisier than I would like, but it's a very smooth engine and it sips fuel. 1200 miles of this car we haven't had to put that much fuel in it really not for 1200 miles so i think it's done quite well you need to keep it in the working range of torque from about 1500 rpm to 3000 rpm because after that it runs out of puff the red line is four and a half thousand rpm you don't want to be revving it that high the gearbox it's a six speed manual gearbox and you can also get seven speed double clutch or a six speed automatic on some other models but I've got a six-speed manual. It's pretty good. It's not too vague, it's not too light, it's not too rubbery. It's got a nice weight to it. And actually for this class of car, I think it's pretty good. The steering is electric and kind of devoid of any real feel, but it is really nicely weighted and the weight of it works really well with the weight of the gearbox and the weight of the pedals. Quite often in this class of car, you can find that they're a bit of a mismatch. They don't really work together. They feel like they've been designed for different cars, but in this, it's got a nice, heavy, reassuring weight to the steering. The gearbox equally similarly weighted, and the pedals all nicely weighted. It just, it feels like they've been designed for the same car, not just designed in isolation and tested in isolation and then lumped together. And actually, it's got quite a lot of grip, this car. It's front wheel drive, but you've got to push it quite hard to get the front tyres to lose traction. And that's surprising in a car that's as big as this and you think, oh, it's just going to be a boat. It isn't. Speaking of boats, it's probably a good time to talk about the way it rides and the way it handles. And I have to say, in terms of ride, 
it's been massively comfortable over the last 1200 miles I can't do a journey like that and not get back pain unless a car has got a decent ride quality and this has perhaps it's a little bit bumpy over A and B roads for certain types of surfaces but it's good let's just put it that way and in terms of handling it's just such a marked improvement over the last Sportage I can't quite emphasize that enough this is a car that I've actually enjoyed driving it's performed really well and again that's part of Kia's upward surge is the fact that not only are the quality of their cars getting better but just the way they drive getting better and better with every new model so the way it looks Kia's design is getting sharper and sharper with every new model and I really like it the interior however is slightly less successful it's not bad nothing feels like it's going to fall apart some of the plastics are actually quite good and these cloth seats I know they perhaps might look a little bit basic when people are used to getting into cars nowadays and everything is coated in leather but they are super super comfortable but it's just not massively creative if you compare it to something like a Peugeot 3008 all of a sudden this will look really dated it's just not very creative all in all it just feels like a very competent package in every little area it just feels like it's been elevated beyond the old Sportage and little things like the fact that the steering and the gearbox and the pedals they've all got similar weights so it just makes it feel like it's been designed as a complete package and not with little parts in isolation and I think it's just proof that Kia's engineers are really serious about building a car that is better than everything else because if they didn't care and if they just wanted to get something out there for you know not very much money things like that they wouldn't be paired up as well as they are so yeah I've quite enjoyed this car it just feels elevated in every way beyond its predecessor